Hello and welcome to a very special Coral Blade Grotto broadcast. Now this is one of my reaction videos. However, this is a special one. Normally I begin each video of this nature with a disclaimer. Talking about it's nothing personal. I'm just looking to audit grammar and look at things through the lens of correct sentence structure and have a little fun for educational and entertainment purposes only. This one's different. This one is personal. Simply because of the group that it is involved with, or involving, I should say, and the individual it's involving, and the communications that I've had the uh, displeasure of participating with over the years, which fortunately I haven't had any in the last year that I can remember. Um, but this involves what used to be called the Red Thumb Club. Then they revenued to be called the Quantum Community, and now I think they're called the Syntax Learning Center. And this video was actually brought to my attention by one of my best students, a brother and a friend, Colon Ricardo, Colon Marseille, who we were talking about this and he was telling me that um, these people had brought up his name and brought up my name in their meeting, the Syntax Learning Center uh, meeting, and I, I didn't remember it. I didn't remember this happening. Now, to be fair, and, uh, and I mean that, to be fair, and to say it three times, to be fair, I have never heard with my own ears or seen with my own eyes Colin Russell, Heaven J. Colin Gould, slander me in public, in a video, anywhere. As a matter of fact, every single communication that I've had with him via email has been fairly cordial. I mean, there were a few, you know, testy uh, communications, but nothing ever uh, could be construed as slanderous or, or mean or anything like that. Um, just just to put that out there and I do have all the emails on record they're filed away and but but this has to do with someone named colon Muriel hyphen meta colon Biggs and she's the one with quote unquote my name in her mouth and Ricardo's name in her mouth and slandering, uh, making claims that cannot be certified or proven, talking about things that she has no first-hand knowledge of that she's taking someone else's word for, something she knows nothing about. And I can make that claim because I know I was there. I was the one in communication with Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould at the time. Not her, me. And I have the emails to prove it. But that's neither here nor there for this particular video. I'm sure I'll get to that at another point. I'm sure I will. We're moving on down the line here. So this is a reaction to a video from October of 2020, I think it is, where this Muriel individual decided to talk about me during um, her little meeting. So the next guy I want to speak on is a guy named Jason, full colon Jason hyphen Matthew, full colon glass. Now, I first learned about him in October of 2018, and I reached out to him. I was super excited. There was somebody already out there teaching grammar on uh, YouTube, and I thought, this is a great opportunity. So I reached out to him with a gesture of friendship as equals, working with correct grammar. Um, his pedigree of learning, as he puts it, is with David Windmiller email and phone conversations, watching Russell videos with and with Mark hyphen Keyshawn Colin Christopher. And one other fellow that I don't even want to bring up his name, but I've been told by Russell that he's a very bad actor. He's not open to learn. Okay. Keep in mind 
these people, and you will hear this in their videos, they always quote Russell or say, the chief said this or the chief said that as if it's gospel or as if it's something we should believe that he said, that they're somehow the mouth of Russell <laughs> speaking his words for him because, I don't know, maybe he can't speak for himself. I don't know, but you will see this, that they do this repeatedly. Or connect or collaborate or speak in a civil manner. So she just said that I am not open to learn or to collaborate or to speak in a civil manner. I'm going to show you the emails that she sent me and I'm going to show you my kuleana and you be the judge of whether you think I'm open to learn or not open to learn, open to communicate or open to not communicate, so on and so forth. As you see here, just like she said in the video on October 15th, 2018, this individual reached out to me. Now she used, she chose to use uh, plain English in italics. Well, some of it's in italics. Um, this right here is not in italics. This is in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. So I can, you know, it's hard for me as a tutor to resist doing this. Uh, but you have a pronoun in Muriel Meta. You have another pronoun in Biggs. You have an adjective in secretary, you have a pronoun in on, you have an adverb the, and then you have contract, Canada, constitution, trust as a dangling participle verb. And also we have some particles of negation, like in contract, you have contra. That is a particle of negation. The se in secretary is a particle of negation. O is a particle of negation because it's a vowel in front of a consonant. But I digress. In any case, this is the communication, the initial communication that she sent out to me. Now, I'll let you, I'll have you know that I was an English major a long time ago in college. And one of the things I used to do in the past was I was a copy editor, meaning that I used to go over people's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, plain English documents and correct them so that they would read better create spe uh, correct spelling mistakes, grammatical syntax mistakes, things like that. And so when I'm looking at someone writing, whether it's in uh, correct sentence structure or it's in plain English, I'm always looking at these things too, so that I can gauge the knowledge level of the author. And this is no different. So she says, greetings, Jason. My name is Muriel, secretary on the contract Can Canadian Constitution Trust. Canada Constitution Trust. A friend sent me a link to your video. It looks very good. May I ask you where you learned your knowledge? You seem to have a very good grasp of the syntax method. I would also be interested to know who is your teacher. Now, as a, you know, an auditor, as someone who's looking at this, this is an interesting uh, plain English mistake in that they put a, she puts a question mark at the end, but this is not a question. This is a statement. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm going along looking at the at the knowledge level here. These are plain rule one, rule equal, very simple, basic, rudimentary judge mechanics. Establish knowledge. Look at the knowledge of the other contract parties, right? I am a member of a group out of the Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, the Red Thumb Club. We are with the learn of our knowledge with the Russell J. Gould question mark. So it looks, it appears as though she's asking me if they are with the learn of their knowledge, as if I would know whether they learn from Russell J. Gould or not, because there's a question mark at the end there. Now, I'm not here to be misunderstood and I'm not here to misunderstand anyone. So based upon this right here, I would have to say this is also a mistake of Nassians because Muriel lacks the knowledge to write in plain English uh, of what, how to write a question, for example, just a regular question or even a regular statement because she puts a question mark at the end of her statements sometimes. And it's interesting that 
she's speaking in plain simple English here, but then she sort of goes into a quasi correct sentence structure style here, right? And ends it with a question mark. It says, are you familiar with the video series War Castles? Now that's a genuine question right there. That's a correct thing that you would put a question mark at the end as opposed to this. Now you may say, Jason, why are you tearing apart this grammar? It's what I do. This is how I gauge people's knowledge level. This is how I vet people to see if they have a position with which to do the things they're doing or say their things they're saying to me. Okay. She contacted me. She's the one that's coming to me. This is my vessel. She has basically requested permission to board my vessel. Keep that in mind. I didn't come to her. She came to me. So she says, I look forward to hearing from you. So I correspond back using correct sentence structure to the best of my knowledge at that time in October of 2018. Now at that time, I had been studying correct sentence structure for about a year and a half. I was there on a rudimentary level. I wasn't all the way there, but I was there at a rudimentary level. I was teaching at that time, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the rudiments of it. But there were some things that needed iron out, and you will see that uh, in the text of this, this uh, email here. We're at private and confidential for the claim of the gratitude is with the kind words of the Muriel with this correct uh, performance by this Jason Matthew Glass. And you can see that uh, I have the lowercase m in my name still. I had not corrected it at that point, but I have since corrected it in 2019 after a conversation with Russell J. Gould via email. Okay. Anyways, that, that has been fixed. Just so you know that it's been fixed for years now. For this claim of the pedigree is with the knowledge cultivation and and or tutorship of the David Wynn Miller via video study, email and telephone tutoring, Russell J. Gould, video study, Mark Sean Christopher, basic sentence structure, parse, and syntax via webinars, Skype, email correspondence, and Raven Farhad, Tohidi Afarin, Raven completed and honed my advanced training and complete knowledge base via intensive one-on-one -on -one training and study. With this thankful exception by this Jason. For this claim with a full familiarity and viewership is with the War Castles video series. Uh, for this claim with the honorable and graceful volition is with the communication companions of the question closures. With this joyful email, and there's a typo. <coughs> oh, wow, another typo. Correspondence. Jeez. By this Jason Matthew Glass. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm actually excited that, that they contacted me. Um, and I was excited to share, you know, full closure on where I learned. And at this point, I was saying that I learned basic sentence structure, parse and syntax. Uh, from Mark. However, with further closure on the grammar, I realized that the only thing I really did learn from him was the parse, because he did not teach correct sentence structure, and he certain, certainly did not teach even rudimentary syntax. So, but hindsight is twenty twenty. So then she wrote, now all of a sudden she goes into quasi correct sentence structure because it's not correct sentence structure because as you can see here she uses incorrect positionals is for your live life position location within the canada, canada territory by your now space volition how would you read that backwards is for your now space volition of out the canada territory wow the the position and lodials are way out of whack, so that makes even no sense to me. I mean, I know she's asking me if I'm in Canada. Is for your knowledge with the watch view of the renal seminar. Is for your knowledge with the closure. With the David Miller block of the claimant solutions with the pastime performance. What? Is for your knowledge with the closure. With the Russell J. Gould. With the David Miller block. So backwards, let's try and read this backwards. 
is by your renal seminar watch of the past time performance with the claimant solutions of the David Wynn Miller block with the Russell J. Gould of the closure by your knowledge. So I guess she's saying, uh, do I know that Russell J. Gould blocked claimant solutions? Why would anybody want to block anybody's solutions? That sounds kind of weird. Is for your knowledge with the Mark Strong Christopher's void fail. Void fail. Void fail means that he was successful, right? Because if you're void fail, if you fail at something, you fail. If you void fail, you're successful. Just like if you're successful, you're successful. If you're void successful, you're not successful. So Mark's not failing to stop and correct with his wrong methods teach. Hmm. So she's saying that Mark did stop and correct. Is for your knowledge of this stop command closure by this Russell J. Gould's publication. What? Now, I don't really don't know what she's saying right there for real. I don't know what she's saying. Uh, what stop and correct? I, mean, I guess she must be referring to the marks uh, stopping and correcting. And then this is more of the same quasi quantum grammar that's not quantum grammar. It's just a mishmash of <laughs> whatever that is. In any case, my final, the final email to her was this one on October 17th. For this claim of the Muriel's question closures is with the list correspondence by this claimant. For this claim of the void live life position is with the Canada territory location by this claimant. I'm telling her I'm not in Canada. For this claim of the correspondence draft is with the current construction and formation of the peaceful quest with the volition of the contact with the Russell of the full closures with the claims of the renal seminar videos with the goal of the peaceful psyche with this correct, honorable, tolerant, neutral, and graceful volition by this claimant. So I'm telling her that I'm writing a draft with the volition of sending it to Russell so that I can get closure on the renal seminar videos so that I can have a peaceful psych, so I can have a peace of mind. And then I say, for this claim of the further closures is with this public Carol video of the Jason's volition and knowledge with this joyful share by the claimant video author. And that's how I left it, ladies and gentlemen. No malice, not even... Uh, the tone of her email before this, you must admit, changed from a friendly one to a more standoffish one, sort of a pushy one, which is nothing compared to some of the other correspondences I've got from, from her cronies. Uh, but even though she did that, you know, took, took that sort of tone with me, I didn't take that tone with her. Um, and I was open to communication and I even said that uh, I was, you know, having a joyful share of knowledge here. And I said I was having a joyful uh, share of knowledge here. So I don't know what she means when she says I'm not open to learn and I'm not open to communication which she does say, which I'll, I'll show you again here so I can refresh uh, your memory. He's not open to learn to spam, he, or connect, or collaborate, or speak in a civil manner. I posed questions of his volition. Russell spoke with him on the phone earlier this year on Okay. Now you can plainly see from those emails that I am open I was open at the time to communicate with her. None of those things she said are true with regards to me. It's certainly not true that I spoke with Russell on the phone. That's an outright lie. Whether she's lying about it or whether Russell lied to her about it, 
I never spoke with Russell on the phone. Never. Not once. We only communicated via email. And I have those on file. I mean, if they can provide proof that I spoke with him on the phone, show it. But that is a lie. And, I mean, that's just par for the course as far as the character of these people. With my knowledge, as I said at the beginning, it's personal. With my knowledge, with the way that they dealt with me and my uh, perception of them, the way they've treated me and the way that they have behaved and performed with me, I wouldn't trust any of them as far as I could throw them. They lie, as I just showed. She lied about what she said, and I proved it. You read, you read the email, viewer. Is anything she said about me true in those emails? Am I really not open to learning? Am I really not open to communicate or anything like that or collaborate? Because I remember at the time, I was. I wanted to, to collaborate with those people. I wanted to somehow, you know, be a part of whatever they were doing. Because I didn't know any better. I'm certainly glad that I didn't. After finding out the true nature and character of them. In that, um, I feel like they're not the most honest people in the world. Let's put it that way. But let, let's continue on here and hear what else she has to say. He has stopped and corrected his grammar and authorizations on the YouTube videos. And he gave his word he would do that. And he's with the void performance of his stop and correct. That's another lie. I stopped and corrected my name. Um, and I will leave a link to that up here where I stopped and corrected my name in 2019 after a conversation with Russell J. Gould. So that's another lie. So I just want to give you a sample of where his grammar construct is wrong. He uses uh, something called connecting letters, like in the Latin, in his writings. And what he does not know is that David Hyphen Wynn, Colin Miller, and Colin Russell, while in court in Salt Lake City, Utah in 1999, a state district court judge taught them about those connecting letters. And he- Okay. What she's talking about here, and as you can see from the emails, her knowledge of plain English is rudimentary at best because she writes questions as statements and vice versa. So what she's talking about connecting letters, that is not even the correct name for it in the fiction. The correct name for it is this. It's a digraph. Digraph. Which basically means source writing or two writing which just means it's a combination of two letters representing one sound that's what a digraph is muriel if you're watching this here's some education for you in any case let's get back to what she's saying I told them it was in canada i wrote this on the board This is a long dash. It's connected. This is a long dash. It's connected with A and D. So that makes this a long dash. And I had two treasury agents in the audience, 72 people in the audience. So this is CA means sheep. Just like. Okay. There's a couple things about this closure that he's giving. Nowhere have I ever seen Canada written like that. Have you? That's number one. Number two, where is his closure on this? Where does two letters connected together equals long dash? Where, where's that written? Okay. Where's that publicly available? I've never seen that. Number three, where has CA ever meant sheep? Let's look it up right now.
phrase expressing the fundamental immutability of life plus ka change. So let's put in a, a hyphen there and see what happens. Nothing. I don't know how else to write it. Let's see. Uh, hyphen CA. Nothing. No sheep, ladies and gentlemen. No continuance of the evidence. If you have continuance of the evidence other than David's word, please send it to me because the stakes are too high to take someone's word for something that you cannot prove. And I cannot prove this, so therefore, um, I'm going to have to call BS on this one. CA in America I means sheep. Both of them stood up, put me in handcuffs, and took me to the airport. Put me on the first plane back to Milwaukee. And they pulled my visa for Canada, and I haven't been back in 12 years. The judges use this method, and it is syntaxed in the same way as the long dash. Now, the long dash, as Russell speaks of on his video, read between the lines, executive order chokehold. So you remember at the beginning, she said that a federal judge taught David and Russell this. So isn't that interesting, ladies and gentlemen, that a fiction federal judge, Russell and David, they're giving jurisdiction of their closure on a long dash to a fiction federal judge. That's pretty mind boggling in and of itself, isn't it? They're taking his word for it. Just as she's taking David's word for what CA means and for what long dash is. So this whole continuance of the evidence that she's giving for long dash equals the connected letters is BS because it's all based on someone's word. And an interesting thing I can show you also about the digraph, because I salvage these things, and I've given closure to them multiple times on my YouTube channel, but I'll do it again. As you see here, I'm using the digraph. You don't have to use the digraph if you don't want to. You can just write it like this, and then it becomes two vowels. It already is two vowels. It's just a fancy way of writing it. So as you can see, it's perfectly fine, as long as you give closure to it. What I do is based upon research, study, and a continuance of the evidence that you yourself can find yourself if you choose to study. All right. Her continuance of the evidence comes from, well, Russell said this. Well, David said this, or a federal judge said this. It's not tangible, concrete sources. It's hearsay. That's what it is. And I, for one, choose not to participate with that type of fiction BS. In grammar is syntax as an omitted word. Some of the hieroglyphics that I'm talking about are quotations. Anything in quotes is removed from the page or italicized words. Anything italicized is misspelled and not on the page. Just like Muriel's first email to me, her entire email, except for the, the adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun section that I mentioned. And also what he's saying about the long dash or what he, she said is true. That's how I syntax the long dash. However, it has no connection, no tangible connection, no concrete connection, no continuous evidence between that and a digraph. None whatsoever, except for he said, she said. So if anybody is using that blended letters or connecting letters um, method of writing their grammar, you're vacating your document. Immediately, off the hop, you're done. Because as we all know, <laughs> in mathematics, when you multiply by zero, the solution is zero. So you... I'll bet you dollars to donuts that this girl couldn't even explain the mathematical interface on grammar if she tried. If she was put on the spot, I bet she would have no idea what she's talking about. As I said about Leighton Lionel Ward in another video, she's obviously just parroting, and this is my perception, parroting what she's heard Russell say, because they're always saying, well, Russell said this and Russell said that, as if they have no minds of their own. 
no creative thought of their own. They just parrot what they hear without knowing why they're saying what they're saying. They just say it. You have nothing. So this guy has zero claim. He's zero correct, zero standing, and zero solutions. Again, there are over 400 videos on my YouTube channel certifying what it is that I do and the closures I provide, all of which can be certified by you, the viewer, just by looking it up. I give sources with which to look it up if you choose to do the study. I never ask you to take my word for it, unlike these people who, you know, kind of go by the old boy system. And he uses this mechanic in all his writings. And this is just one of the things he's wrong on. And as I said, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't feel comfortable with using that, just use that. But me, I prefer to use the digraph because number one, it looks cool. Number two, I give closure to it. And number three, it's correct. So to wrap this up, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to draw your attention to your screen right now. This is from the video on October 20th, 2020 that I just reacted to. And I'd like you to look at the grammar here. You see a tilde and a 20. What does that mean? Tilde 20 hyphen tilde October hyphen tilde 2020 full colon. Well, number one, that is one entire pronoun because the 20 has not been positioned. There's no for the in front of the 20. There's no colon in front of it. How does correct sentence structure work? What is the premise? Facts must be positioned by position lodial phrases. Are numbers facts? Okay. Well, if a number is a fact, then it must be positioned with a position lodial phrase, just like any other fact. Otherwise, you're just assuming. So this is not correct, and it betrays a severe lack of correct sentence structure knowledge. And then we have a colon and then nothing. And then we have a very large amount of space right here. A break in a continuance of the evidence, some could say. So here is another pronoun. This, it appears to be a website, but that's a pronoun because it has not been positioned either. It is, if it had been left justified, and if there had been a colon in front of the tilde in front of this 20, then it would be correct. Notice, Syntax Learning Center, I'm telling you how to correct your grammar, okay? I'm giving you solutions. Something that Muriel said, I don't have. But actually, I have many, many solutions. Over 400 videos worth of solutions, free to the public. Unlike the Syntax Learning Center, where you have to pay to get anything, to get anywhere with it. But that's neither here nor there. As I said at the beginning, this is quite personal for me. That's why you're seeing a different side of me here. You're seeing a very focused and... Uh, technical and blunt factual side. So this is a pronoun. And then what's after that? We have another bit of space and then a colon and then a space and then meet and then a particle of negation ing. We don't put particles of negation in our facts. Now up here, of course, you see a vowel in front of a consonant in October. However, that's a name. And in certain names, we use the honor and the grace, uh, and we don't draw attention to those. Like those of you out there who have a vowel in front of a consonant in your first name or your last name. No honorable and graceful individual is going to call you out on that. Okay? And it's just like months of the year for ease of the communication. I mean, if you wanted to, you could put a sick in brackets at the end of October if you really wanted to. But no one's really going to call you to the carpet for something like that. But I just wanted to show you the level of grammar that we're dealing with with these people.
colon space Russell hyphen J. So we have of the Russell J. That is not correct. But yet up here we have colon syntax hyphen learning hyphen center hyphen tilde zero period. I see that they began putting full stops in it and they took the space away. So they must be watching my videos. And there's no space in between the colon and the D here. So that's very interesting. Look how haphazard that is. Also, this foreign correspondent, that's a that's a particle of negation, the F-O-R-E. And also the R-E in correspondent is a particle of negation. Um, you know, I would offer to help teach these individuals, but of course they can check out my YouTube channel, which they apparently have since they've corrected at least some things on their YouTube channel. I would like to end the video by saying that they also mentioned in the video one of my best students, Colin Ricardo, Colin Marseille, and basically tried to make him sound like he's a very bad person, a bad actor. And I can personally say to you that Ricardo is one of the most honorable people that I know. I wouldn't associate with him if he wasn't. And the fact that they speak that way about him tells me about their character, because I doubt that they've ever even spoken with the man. I myself have met him in person. As he was my best student, I went down to Florida and I made it a point to meet him in person. And it was a wonderful meeting and he is a, a great guy. And I can't say enough good things about him. Um, I don't trust very many people, but he's definitely one of them. And as I've shown in this video, these people, Muriel, uh, especially here, which I can say that I showed in this video, they lie. Flat out, just lie about things. With no evidence, no proof, no nothing. Just based upon what Russell said, or what David said, or whatever. Myself, I navigate on a different level. As they say, there are levels to these things. I give a continuum to the evidence. It's not what I say. I give sources for what I say. I say, look it up. I tell you exactly where to go to certify what I'm saying for yourself. And then if you choose not to agree with it, that's cool too. That just means that you and I won't be contracting. But when you're put in a position where you're put on the spot, you're under duress, and you have to use this grammar, what's going to work for you? Knowing what you know, knowing that you can give a continuance of the evidence, knowing that you know why a vowel in front of a consonant is a particle of negation, that you know what an adverb is, and you know why it modifies a verb or why it modifies an adjective, you know these things, you know why there's only four positionals, you know what rule one rule equal is, you can tell you can say these things and you can also give closure to them by giving sources. Is that going to work out better for you? Or would you rather say, well, Russell said so. Well, Muriel said so. Because that's the way it is. That's the way we do it. Which, which method is going to work better, do you think? I'll leave that up to you to ponder. And I'll draw your attention back to the uh, video I did about Mitchell Smith, who was pulled over by a police officer. And Mitchell began talking about, well, the chief federal, uh, chief federal judge said this and that. You know where that got him? It got him in jail. And I don't even need to bring up the video I did about the sad story of Leighton Lionel Ward, okay? I highly recommend you learn this stuff for yourself. Think for yourself. Certify these things for yourself. And step back. Take an objective view of things. Look at all the evidence. That's simple rudimentary judge mechanics. Yes, I'm, I have an emotional... Um, 
an emotional bias in this particular scenario just because of the experiences that I've had with these people. I make no secret of it. I view them as bullies. I view them as rude. I view them as liars. And I view them as complete 100% fiction BS. And I'm so glad that I never got involved with them. I'm so glad that they treated me the way that they did. Because for the same reason I didn't join the military, because of the way they treated me, it's the same reason I didn't want to mess with these people. Because I firmly participate with Rule 1, Rule Equal in a geometric level playing field, and I will not participate with anyone who tries to put themselves above me and try and unlevel the geometric level playing field. Period. End of story. Thanks for watching, and now we return you to your regular scheduled broadcasts. Salute.